this series that we're in today is called Rivers of Living Water. Say rivers. Is that singular or plural? <laughs> get ready for it. So don't get stuck in one mode of thinking. Say it's only this. It's not only that. There's mo- multiple rivers, multiple streams. You know, we, we hear that with multiple streams of income. That's one way of thinking of it. I like multiple streams of income. Get it to me however you want. We don't care. We don't care. Lord, we just want you to supply all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All right. And then it, this message title, the first one in the series is called The Fountain Within. It's the Fountain Within. Within. The Fountain Within. And so we're going to start in Matthew chapter 15. I know you didn't turn to Matthew yet, but we're going to start in Matthew. Do you want to start in Matthew? We had better because that's where I started the notes. Matthew 15 in verse 17. I'm getting there. I'm getting in my paper Bible right there with you. See this? 15, 17. Jesus says, do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? Moving right along. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. See, but those things which proceed out of the mouth, say out of the mouth. mouth. Yeah, that's right. Out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. See, in the Old Testament law, there was all this talk about what you should eat and what you should not eat. In fact, what you may eat and what you may not eat because God was in control and he was calling the shots on things that we could eat at that time. He had a plan and a purpose. Remember those things like you can eat these things that, that have cloven hooves and choose the cud. You know, you, you can eat these things that are not pork, right? You can, you can eat things in the ocean that have fins and scales, right? No, nothing just with just fins and nothing with just scales, if there is such a thing. I'm not even sure what just has scales, but no fins. But he had a specific order to things when he was building his house among the children of Israel, right? He had a specific order to things, right? And so he's talking here about what you can eat, what you can't eat. And so the Pharisees here in this Matthew passage have been questioning Jesus. Why are your disciples not washing their hands before they eat? Because we got this whole rule book, you see? And, and Jesus is saying, listen, don't you understand? It's not what goes in that's defiling you. It's what's coming out of you. What's coming out of you. And so we're going to talk about the fountain within. Ephesians 5, verses 18 through 20 says, And do not be drunk with wine. Now this is talking about taking in, isn't it? So there is an application about certain things that we need to avoid, isn't it? In the Bible, God is clear about don't be drunk with wine. Can we all just agree together as people in a church listening to the Bible being spoken out to you, that being drunk with wine is no good. God is against it, right? Okay, so we're all on the same page there. All right, because some people will try to argue that point when it's so very clear. And not just here, there's a ton of scriptures about it, so don't think I'm just pulling one out and trying to make it say something more. It's saying, do not be drunk with wine which in which is dissipation, but on the contrary, be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be filled up with something, Let's try the Holy Spirit. Yeah? The Holy Spirit. Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What do we just hear about the heart? Those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the what? Oh, yeah, Jesus was saying that. They come from your heart. And so here in Ephesians, singing singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What comes out of your heart? Your words. Spoken or sung, and I'll just kind of, it's not even in the notes, but it's, it's a link to this message. Paul says, I will therefore speak in the Spirit, and I'll speak in a known language. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing in my known language. Isn't that right? And so, whatever is in your heart in abundance comes out, and it gets out of you through your mouth. Whatever is in your heart in abundance comes out. And this is what we're talking about. There's a fountain within And so notice in the transition between verses 18 and 19, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit speaking. Be filled with the Spirit speaking. Be filled with the Spirit what? 
speaking. How are you going to know when someone's filled with the Spirit? Yeah, they're going to be speaking the things of God. Isn't that right? And so this is what we're talking about today. Now, because you've opened to John chapter 7, we can look at it together. In fact, if you don't have the New King James Version, would you just look at the screens and we'll read this all together. Ready, go. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. The Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Remember, Jesus said, look, I have to die in order for this whole thing to turn out right. Remember, someone's got to sacrifice if this whole thing's going to turn out right. Remember that song from a couple weeks ago? You don't know these jokes if you weren't here, but you'll get it. Just keep on coming. Keep on coming. You're like, I don't know if I wanted to get that joke. Um, Jesus said, I have to die having lived this whole perfect life this whole time, all these 33 years, right? I've lived this whole perfect life for you, and I'm giving my death for you, and, Jesus, and, the, and Father God is going to raise me up from the dead for you, and then we're going to send you the Holy Spirit for you. Isn't that right? All these things for you, but there's an order, and there's a sequence, and there's a process of time that has to happen. And so the Holy Spirit had not yet been given here because Jesus was not yet glorified, but when he was raised from the dead, oh, it started happening. Isn't that right? So, this precious gift of the Holy Spirit that we have been given, that he promised to us, remember, ask the Father and he'll give you the Holy Spirit. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, I'm not looking at you moms, dads, uh, how can you say anything on Mother's Day, right? But if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, Father in Heaven, isn't that right? He, he gives great gifts, and one of those is the Holy Spirit who just keeps on giving. Amen. And so let's look back at this John 7 passage. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, you're going to hear a lot of saying scriptures today because this is one of the things that the fountain that's in you needs to get activated and you start speaking, start saying. If anyone thirsts, so if anyone's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. That's reasonable. If you're thirsty, you want to drink. And Jesus is saying, I can fill you up, right? I got what you need. Okay. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, see now this is a difference between consumption, now we're dispensing. Isn't that right? You take something in, you get quenched, and now we have it to give out to other people. See, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. Don't you laugh at me. Out of his heart will flow rivers of, you try to say it. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Say, out of my heart will flow rivers of living water. Amen. I love it when you speak to me. That's so good. All right. Rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit. So what are we saying? We're not just talking about any old thing that you're talking about. Isn't that right? Uh, Jesus himself said, I have much to say and to judge concerning you but he held it back two different times he said one because you can't handle all of it right now and number two because i only say what i hear the father saying isn't that right see i spoke concerning the spirit anyone think that jesus had the holy spirit with him yeah me too praise the lord jesus is the ultimate authority on the holy spirit and i think that paul the apostle of god that we learned about last week he as a writer of most of the New Testament, he is the utmost authority as the scripture writers, of the scripture writers, to, to bring us into some more knowledge on this. So, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water concerning the Spirit. And now we're in a time where the Holy Spirit has been given. Again, are we all agreed on this? The Holy Spirit is a reality now for all of us? Yes, can be, if you want him. I love this, this quote. You can have as much of God as you want, and you do. Oh, you can have as much of him as you want, and you do. For some of us, that's good news, and some of us, that's convicting news, right? Because I could go after the Lord a little bit more, a little more, can I? And he he will be right there. That's the good news. He's right there to supply everything you need. 
in John 4, verses 5 through 14. This is a, a long passage of Scripture here. We're going to get through it. And I'm going to speak slowly, slowly enough to not trip over my own words. Here we go. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? So that she's got them on both counts, right? Because generally this does not happen culturally that you ask a drink from me a samaritan woman for jews have no dealings with samaritans jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of god and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water jesus is opening up something to her right now isn't he and he's opening up something to us right now as well in verse 11 the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw with and this well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? She, she is putting it right back in his face a little bit. Do you see this? So it, it wasn't like, oh, how, how can you talk to me? I'm a little nobody. Da, 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 da. It was, no, it was contentious, right? And so she's like throwing it right back in his face. Hey, I don't see you have a, a big old ladle or a bucket or whatever, the, the rope with the well and the thing you don't have any of that how are you going to draw this water you got nothing okay are you greater than our father jacob she just keeps going sometimes we dig ourselves a hole don't we praise the lord for his grace and mercy let's see where are we who gave us this well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock jesus answered and said to her whoever drinks of this water will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Oh, this is so good. This woman already did not want to come to this well, certainly at the time of day that she had to come in the heat of the day to draw water and then presumably carry it back to wherever she was going. This is not an easy task and she's got to do it all the time because she's gotten herself in a mess and people are probably chit-chatting about her behind her back and it's uncomfortable for her to be there in the cooler part of the morning to get some water when everybody else is maybe coming and so now she's here at this really precarious time because she's gotten herself in a mess with her living situation let me say and uh so she she is already postured to be able to receive something because she does not want to be in this. She doesn't want to stay in this place. And so when Jesus said, well, if you, if you only knew who, you t who are you talking to, if you only knew who you were talking to, you would ask me, and I give you living water that you'll never thirst again. <laughs> That's good news. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Okay, now look at this in verse 14. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. In him, including in her, but the water that I give him shall become in him, become in him, become in him. This takes cultivation. This takes intentionality. This takes attention, and, and I, I love what my pastor in, in Corona said. How do you spell attention? T-I-M-E. <laughs> Give attention to my words, my son, right? Time. you got to spend time in order for someone to feel like they have your attention. In fact, we were praying this morning in the encounter service, which is a whole different type of service that we have here, and spending time asking the Lord, what does complete look like? And someone said their takeaway was to be fully present to be fully present with the lord in ministry and conversations with the family all of it be fully present that's what complete looks like for them and i think we can learn something from that we're going to take time and give attention see this water will become 
in him. Say in him. That's right. A fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I don't know, it must have been 85 times this week I have felt the, the urge to say, spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Do you remember that song? The little, the little Sunday school children's song, right? Oh, all the all time this week. And then I started getting creative. I started getting, yeah, Joshua, I was like, you know what? There's some on the drums that we can make happen. No, anyway, but I was thinking, let's, let's do this thing. Spring up a well. Within my soul, right? Within my soul. It's springing up into what? Into everlasting life. This is not just anything you want to talk about. This is not, I don't know, sports. I was trying to think of a sports team. I don't know. How are the Dodgers doing? I don't know. Right? <laughs> Someone say good? All right. If we're going to root for anyone, it's going to be the Dodgers, but... Uh, Sorry, Anaheim, <laughs> but it's the Dodgers. Yeah, especially in the freeway series. Listen, Anaheim. Richard, don't you go tell Pastor Jerry I was talking about the angels. All right, all right. As we come in him, a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay, if you have a fountain in you and you have a tendency to get thirsty, you think that you're going to be set? Because now... It's not like I have to go back and get this thing now. It's just there. Praise the Lord. These are realities. I don't want you to think that when you come and hear the word of God, that this is like, oh, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, it's nice, but it's meant to be done. You have to do something with it. Jesus said, those who come to me and hear my sayings and do them build their lives solid on the rock. That's what we do around here. We build solid lives. So if you're here listening to me today, I'm trying to build your life solid. Out of his heart, remember, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Like a fountain. This word, it, say P-E, not P-E like physical education, P-E. Say it. P-E, a fountain. It means the source or supply of something. <laughs> like a fountain or a well. All right. And this word well, this, this P-E, is translated well twice in John 4. And fountain, remember the woman with the issue of blood. And a, the fountain of blood was dried up when Jesus, when she caught the hem of his garment, right, in Mark 5. So not like a standing well where the water just sits there, but like a, like a fountain. Has anyone been to Mexico and been to La Bufadora? Yeah. And we, some of us have been there, right? That's been good. And so what happens is, okay, so the ocean basically stays down here. Isn't that right? But what La Bufadora does, you hear how I rolled that R? Very authentic. We Hispanics got to stick together. <laughs> um, La Bufadora comes up, and now it's like, ba-bam! And it's like this glorious thing, and people take trips to go see this La Bufadora. I gave you a little extra on that R roll. You're welcome. And it's... It's, something, it's, a, it's a delight to us. People take trips to go see the, the spring happen. All this water, poof, and it's naturally occurring. I don't think La Bufadora is trying to get this thing to come up because of the tourism. No, this has become, in this inlet, right, a fountain springing up and bringing delight and refreshment, and it's, it's getting on you. That's nice. La Bufadora, you're welcome. So, those who believe, as the scripture has said, the water that Jesus gives will become in you a fountain of water springing up. Springing up. One fountain supplying many rivers. Many rivers. Remember this, Ephesians 5. Be filled with the Spirit speaking. Be filled with the Spirit speaking speaking, singing too. Praise the Lord. Yeah, get it. Come on up here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We got to get it out of our mouths. Isn't that right? It's one thing for me to know something and then never tell anyone about it. What, what if someone tells you, hey, go, go tell so-and-so to meet us at the wishing well at 1 p.m. And you're like, well, I'm just going to go on the Matterhorn and I'm going to go on the Space Mountain. I never tell them to meet us there, right? And 
now we cannot make this connection because I've had it, but I haven't gotten it out of my mouth. It does nobody any good if it stays here with me. Isn't that right? And how much more the things of the Spirit. Pastor Monica, who was here with us about a month or two ago, had said, if I have a word from the Lord for you and I keep it, it's like robbery. It's like he's given it to the armored truck people and they never got to the, the, the source or, or to the destination. That's terrible. We can't, we can't withhold from one another. This is meant to be a fountain springing up the spirit inside. All right, check this out. You go to in and out picture it. You're like, I'm picturing it right now. I'm picturing it, but good. You go to in and out and you order and you, and you say, okay, give me a, my double-double, no onions, you know, the fries. This is just me now. Just go with me. You can do whatever you want when you're in and out Okay, so I get my double-double, no onions, and a drink, and my fries. And, and so what happens is they're going to give you a number and your food's going to come, but they're going to ha- hand you a cup, right? And it's like, yeah, I want, I want some, I don't know, Coke. They don't have Mountain Dew at in and out which is a problem. We need to write a strongly worded letter. Let's, in fact, let's, let's pray right now. Um, that's all right. But let's say I'm going to get a Coke that day, right? They'll hand, they won't hand me a Coke. What are they going to hand me? An empty cup. And I'll say, well, could, could you fill this up for me? And like, oh, oh certainly, you know, the, the dispenser is right over there. You can get whatever you want. And uh, then go for it. I'm like, yeah, but could you just do it? I mean, can you? You got one back? I mean, the drive through right? I mean, can you, right? Well, they're like, oh, sir, I mean, as much as you want, anything that you'd like to get, you know, and, uh, well, it's all right over there. <laughs> but could you just, you know? And they're probably nice enough to be, they'll probably just do it for you, right? But you think you're going <laughs> to come back and be like, well, here I am. You know, we remember you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Charlie, check out this one, you know. Um, see, that's not how it works, is it? They said, here it is. You can go get as much as you want. As much as you want. Isn't that good? This is a good way to picture it, isn't it? I was in, um, I was in the uh, Young Americans, and we were doing a, sh- a dinner theater in Boyne Highlands in Harbor Springs, Michigan. And before our show, we would have a little pre-show out in the zoo bar. And so everyone would have their hors d'oeuvres and things there. And behind the counter, this is my favorite thing in, <laughs> in this whole time, there was this... It was like a, it had a handle on it and like a little tube. And there were buttons on the top of it. And whenever I wanted a Coke, there it is. Mountain Dew, just another button. It's the whole, it's right there. This is rivers right here. (laughs) This is rivers, all right? Out of this one fountain, rivers. And from this one little, I don't know, soda gun, right? And I love that thing because I could get it anytime. I went, now, here's what the Lord is saying to us today. He said, I have installed a fountain inside you that anytime you feel thirsty, dehydrated, anytime you feel like someone else is thirsty, needing a drink, needing refreshment, husbands washing your wives by the water of the word, whenever you feel like this is necessary, you got this thing installed in you that's a fountain springing up and coming out of your mouth. Speaking, isn't that right? Speaking, because why? The Lord has installed it in you. No, gone are the days of you walking up to the gal at in and out and saying, well, could you just, though? I mean, Jesus, he filled us with the Holy Spirit. He's willing to do it. But so often, as believers, don't we get into this rut, into this tradition of, here I am again, Lord. I'm in your presence, and I just, I'm, fill me up again. Because I'm messed up. He's given you the fountain installed inside you. You can get it. 
for yourself? Instead of sending Jesus to go refill your Mountain Dew. Here we go, Jesus. Just Oh, Jen loves this. When you shake a cup of ice at her. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who has learned that lesson. I just know that she doesn't like it. Because I'm observant. I'm ob- I watch things, you see. <laughs> Try this. this. Shaking some ice in an empty glass. <laughs> and by try this, I mean don't try this. <laughs> Jesus, shake, shake, shake. Just uh, why don't you run over there and uh, bring some of this back for me. Don't we do it? Jesus, you run over there, get some of that Holy Spirit, and you bring it back to me. He's already given it, and not only given it, but installed in you that thing that's in you becoming this fountain that will refresh you from now until eternity. And not only you, but out of his mouth will flow rivers of living water. Are you hearing me talk to you today? (laughs) This is so funny. (laughs) To me. To me. You're a good sport. (laughs) Okay. Your mouth, say my mouth is not the source. My mouth is the faucet. You know how at your house you may have some certain kind of faucets? We have a lot of that singular faucet thing that you can turn it all the way around and it's just it's going to spray it out as fast as it wants, you know, but here it's going to be cold and here it's going to be warm and here it's going to be hot. Do you know those? Here, okay, doesn't matter. Some, some of you have those that you two hand on it. On the right side, what do you get when you turn that faucet on? Cold, hopefully. Yeah, if you've done it right. If not, see John after service. Uh, and then on the left, what are you supposed to get? Hot. And if you blend the two, I'll make it just how you want it, right? I got a river of life flowing out. of just Lukewarm, give it. Lukewarm has another connotation. We should say something else. Hot. I want the hot. Just give me the hot. That was a Bible joke. If those of you who don't know, God says, I will vomit the lukewarm out of my mouth. <laughs> and so we, we don't want that. He said, I'd rather you be cold than lukewarm. Don't, don't try to just say, well, I came to church. So let me into your heaven, right? Or I said that prayer that one time when I was six. So let me into your heaven. I'll be with you and enjoy all your goodness forever. Not that I did anything about it. Too heavy. I know you're all hot coals in here. You're like, give me the hot water. Yeah, just Lord, you and me together. We're the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous avails much. All right. So I'm talking to the hot people in here. You're hot. Let's move on. So do you have this piece of equipment installed in you? Yeah, likely you do. And if you don't, all it takes is asking the installer, Lord, install this in me. Put your spirit in me. Make me alive with you. Make me one spirit with you. That's what it takes. In fact, keep this in mind because we're going to pray in a few minutes. If you haven't done that and you don't know that you are a part of the family of God and you don't know that you have heaven waiting for you when your number's called, when the Lord said it's time for you to go and be with here with me in heaven, if you don't know that, make sure today that your calling and election is all set, your salvation is good with the Lord. Whoever confesses, here's here's that thing coming out of your mouth again. I got enough of the Holy Spirit drawing me even before I'm saved to get it out of my mouth. I, I confess I am making Jesus the boss, the king of my life who gets to call all the shots. That's lordship, Jesus Lord. And I believe that Father God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. We'll act on that a little later when we pray. If that's you today, you're in the right place because you can get that thing installed. Now, all the rest of us who already know that we're saved, it's installed in you. You you can go off out to, to the, well, ours is by the street, and take that little thing, plop it down there in the box, and twist it, and the water shut off to everything, right? Toilets aren't flushing. 
faucets aren't happening, the sink, the dishwasher, nothing's going. The pool is just going to evaporate out. Nothing. So don't stop the flow. Don't, don't, go to, don't stop going to the Lord and saying, what are, you, what are we doing? What are we doing? What, what's on your mind? What, what, what do you have for me today? I think that's how we should start every day, by the way. Lord, what are you speaking to me? What's today look like? Which of my enemies are you going to prepare a table before me? In whose presence am, am I going to look good today? Because you are, right? Because you are. I don't even have to do it. The Lord sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies so they can see it. He wants to make a distinction between his people and not his people. But we have to let him. And that invitation, Lord, you just come with me. I'm coming with you. You're coming with me. All over the place, OSL level one. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That's right. That's, that's his heart for us. That's what he wants for us. Ask him at the start of every day, what do you have for me today? Okay, let's look at the New Testament. We're going to rapid fire this because it is so much fun to make sure you, I mean, to see it. Boom, 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 happening throughout the New Testament. Luke 1, verse 39 now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah, this is Jesus' mommy, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened, when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, what's a greeting? Hi, Elizabeth. Okay, we're good so far. That the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, wow. So John the Baptist is being made in his mother's womb, right? And now leaps for joy at this greeting. Hello. It's not like anything was exchanged in terms of information. Do you see? What was happening? The Holy Spirit was at work. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke. Does this sound like I'm talking to you about the same thing? Then she spoke out with a loud voice, probably surprised herself by what she goes on to say. Blessed are you among women. Whoa, that's a, that's a high blessing. Of all the women, you're blessed. You're the blessedest. Is. Blessed, all right? And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me as a gift that the mother of my Lord should come to me? What? Mary hadn't gotten, you know, 10 words out. And Elizabeth has this revelation from the Holy Spirit. She's filled with the Holy Spirit, and now she knows, hey, this Jesus, this is something. An angel has visited her. Did I get to that part yet? Uh, no. Um, For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, as soon as the sound of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Elizabeth doesn't know that Mary was visited with this heavenly greeting. Gabriel being sent by God to deliver this great news that's going to be salvation for everyone who believes, right? She doesn't know this, but by the Holy Spirit, she knows this. And she's speaking out. She's like, whoa, something just happened up in here, right? Elizabeth is aware, and now she's, what, speaking. You see this rivers of living water flowing out of her, speaking. Luke 1, 67 now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, and you remember, this is after a time that he wasn't allowed to say anything because he didn't believe, right? So when you're with the Holy Spirit, now you get to speak and refresh and have life for yourself and give it to other people. If you're not going to believe the Lord, <laughs> he might just stop up your mouth. Oh, ho, ho, yeah, I'm not afraid of you. All right. And prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began. So now you have Elizabeth and Zacharias both, filled with the Holy Spirit, testifying, prophesying. These are rivers, aren't they? Acts 2.4. And they were all, all the disciples who were gathered in this upper room, all filled with the Holy Spirit and... Immediately after we know that they're filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens? They began to speak. You're going you're gonna to see it. And you're never going to see it in the Bible a different way. You're like, ha, there it is, over and over and over again. And began to speak with other tongues 
as the Spirit gave them utterance, which means other languages that they had not previously known. Could be some language that someone else knows. Could be a language that the, only the Father knows. They're speaking with other tongues. So you might hear the phrase, speaking in tongues. Has anyone heard that phrase? Yeah? And, and not all of us have always been comfortable with it. I hadn't always understood this. I hadn't experienced it, and I hadn't seen it, and I was really not sure that that was a thing. And then, but I, I, like uh, Barnabas, I had to go get some education on this. And praise the Lord. He, in his, so many questions would be answered if we just read the word. It's not like it's not in here. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness. We have a more sure word of prophecy in this collection of 66 books. Let's dig into it. All right, Acts 4, speaking of digging into the word, we're going fast and furious here. 4, 8, and 9. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, are you starting to see a pattern? He said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he, look, they're saying, we're filled with the Spirit. We got this whole thing. Should we listen to you? Should we listen to God? Mm, you decide, right? They, they're saying, we can't just keep silent about this thing. We believe, therefore we spoke that's right acts 4 23 and being let go they went to their own companions and reported speaking that the chief priests and elders had said to them so when they had heard that they raised their voice to god with one accord and said lord you are god you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that's in them see now they're prophesying good things about what the lord has done they're speaking the word the truth of the bible in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth right now they're testifying they're prophesying Acts 4.31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they what? Guess. Spoke the word of God with, Laura, where are you? What did they speak with? Boldness. Ba-bam. Acts 10.44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out. So here we're seeing another time. The Holy Spirit is present on the Gentiles also. See, there was a time they didn't even know if the Gentiles could get saved, right? So now it's like, whew, I, I guess we're all in this together. I guess God really is no respecter of persons. So the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them what? Speak with tongues and magnify God. Speak with tongues. I want you to notice it's right here in the Bible. And then Peter continues speaking. It says, then Peter answered. Let's look at Acts 19, verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? See, he's no novice. Paul is no novice. He's not brand new to this thing. He's gotten revelation from the Lord, and he excellently, precisely cuts to the heart of the issue did you receive the holy spirit when you believed? so they said to him we have not so much as heard whether there is a holy spirit and he said to them well into what were you baptized then and they said into john's baptism oh okay and paul said john indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe they should believe on him who would come after him that is on christ jesus now when they heard this at that time they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they got re-baptized, so to speak, now that Jesus had come. So now were they saved? Yes. Speak to me. Now were they saved? Yes. yes. And when Paul had laid hands on them, another designation of time, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied over and over and over again, fountains of living water, rivers just pouring out of these people's mouths. They spoke with tongues and prophesied when the Holy Spirit had come upon them. Look at 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14 is just after 1 Corinthians 13. I know, shocking. It's what we normally call the love chapter, right? And love is this, and love is that, and love doesn't do this, and love doesn't do that. But it's all in the context of these spiritual gifts. And so 14 follows that up. It says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but he speaks to God. 
for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, building up, right? And exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Say, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. You want to be built up? Practice. Speak in tongues. Ask the Lord for the gift. Ask him for this language. Speak through me. Give him an invitation. You'll build yourself up. Amen. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. That's another level. We should do both. Amen. See, I'd rather speak five words in church, you know, with something that you can understand, rather than 10,000 in a tongue that you're never going to understand. This is just me and the Lord right here, this, this tongue part. There's a whole other broader teaching on this, but for now, let's just say we should do both. In Jude 20, it's that one chapter, right? So verse 20, whatever. Jude 20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. All right, 1 Corinthians 14 uh, at verse 5. Paul says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. What? So that there really goes any idea that not all Christians should speak with tongues, right? I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied for the edification of all. Isn't that right? But he, uh, who, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with a tongue, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks. And he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. All right, so when we're gathered together, A, it, it's, it's assumed here that we should be speaking in tongues. And it says, let him who speaks with a tongue pray that he may interpret. Verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What's the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit. Here we are. We're back there. I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen, or so be it, at your giving of thanks? They don't even know what you're saying, since he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak. This is Paul talking again. I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Did Paul the apostle speak with tongues? How much? <laughs> yeah, a lot. More than anybody else. And he was thankful for it. Verse 19, Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Verse 39, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Do not forbid to speak with tongues. Unfortunately, my experience has been this, that I have been in church, in churches that disallow this, that speak against this, that don't teach the, the whole counsel of God on this. See, we're not talking about one time when, when Paul is talking about there are people who are overusing this. So everyone's coming in and just babbling, babbling with stuff that's not understood. That's over, like oversharing. Have you ever heard of anyone oversharing? Yeah, this is like, it's like a secret between me and God almost, right? I'm speaking here and oversharing. He's saying, let it be done. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Sometimes people say, we're just going to shoot the moon. Anything goes. Well, where's the decently and in order part? So there's a ditch on this side of the road, so to speak. And on the other side, like where I had been, 
there was, well, none of that's for now, none of that's for, it's all stopped if it ever was, and don't worry about it. That's not letting all things be done with or without order, right? It's disallowing. So we need to be right in the middle of this thing, rightly dividing the word of truth, and that's what we're doing today. See, rivers of living water, you have that thing installed in you. And what you got to do is open up your mouth and get it out. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God to your families. When there's trouble, when there's stress or pressure, say, no, 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 we're anxious for nothing. The windows of heaven are open over us. We are tithers. And that's the link. God has said, you obey in this, I'll open all the windows of heaven over you and pour out for you such blessing that you won't have room enough to contain it. See, we're not supposed to contain stuff. We're supposed to let it out of our mouths. In fact, can you stand to your feet right now and let's practice this even now? We're going to dim the lights and invite the prayer team and the praise team to come to be ready as we usher in this time where the Lord gets to speak to us and we get to speak right back. Lord, we have been hearing your word today and we know that you have graciously installed in us a fountain of living water springing up into everlasting life. Lord, would you spring up this well in us and make us those who don't just pop into church from time to time or come all the time and never do anything with what we're learning. Lord, make us those people who are so full of faith so full of assurance that you are the faithful God who keeps your covenant to all generations. That you have good plans for us. And part of that is released by us speaking out your word. By us saying we're not going to turn on the cold faucet side, so to speak, and, and speak the things that the soul part of my heart wants to speak. Oh, I, I'm always the first one to get sick. Oh, we're not, we don't have enough money. We're always going to have a car payment. But we speak what you say. That I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. That windows of heaven are open over me. That you prepare a table before me in the presence even of my enemies. That you never forsake the righteous. Their seed never has to beg for bread. Lord, that you clothe us so much more and so much finer than the sparrows who never go without. Lord, all your good and precious promises that that you heal us from every disease and every sickness. Say, I am healed instead of I'm always sick. Lord, get that river flowing out of our mouths. Lord, I am always protected. I am always provided for. Get these rivers in full activation flowing out of us. And and we're, (laughs) it's kind of a misnomer to say, Lord, do it. You put the fountain in us. Lord, inspire us to turn the faucet on and allow these rivers of living water to flow forth from us. Not only for us, but for all those who you are sending us to. Would someone in this house be so bold as to say, Lord, do that in me. Let me turn on the hot water and never turn off that faucet. That rivers of living water will continually flow out of my mouth and bless and encourage and build up everyone who hears it make me a fountain of living water right now in the name of jesus amen i want to tell you something he has done it for you because you prayed that prayer i am proud of you i am proud of you for taking that step and saying i release the closing of my mouth i release my mouth to be opened He has filled it. Let it out. Let it out. Not only inviting people to come to the place where life is, where renewed life is, where abundant life is that Jesus talks about in John 10, but also where life givers are made by the Spirit of God. You're life givers in this place. 
If you have a need, a physical need in your body, you need healing, I want you to come to the front right now. All of these who are gathered, our trained people are praying already. If you have a physical need in your body, if you have a financial need in your finances, if they are low and devastatingly low and you're getting concerned about it, come up here. If you have a friend who you know is in need for any reason, come up and pray for them. We need intercessors. The Lord, this is a move. Remember we were singing that this morning? This is a, if it's a move so much, then let's move. This is a move. The Lord needs you to intercede for your friends. Move to the front and pray. Move in your heart to be willing to say, I have a friend who needs such and such. And we seek the Lord together on their behalf. That's a good friend. For you, for anyone else you know, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Get it out of your mouth. Get the need. He already knows what you need before we even ask, the Bible says. But he says, ask. For everyone who asks, receives. Jesus said that. This wasn't even someone we we may trust less than Jesus. But Jesus said, everyone who asks, receives. Seek and you shall find. Knock the door will be opened to you. What door? The door to the right job, the right employment. The door to, maybe maybe there's a, a lawsuit against you or one of your friends that, that maybe that's dropped. Maybe the Lord rules on your behalf, in your favor. Who knows? I'm not prescribing beyond asking the Lord for his good plan to come to pass in your life. Because remember, we don't care, we don't care. Lord, we just want you. Lord, you get to decide. You get to decide. The rock is a place, God, where you get to do what you want to do. And you've installed this fountain in us, springing up into everlasting life, these rivers of living water flowing from us. We declare that you are good. If you're hearing my voice and and you're out there to say, Lord, you are good. Your mercy does endure forever. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Come on, join me in these these confessions and these declarations. You are a friend to me. You stick closer than a brother. You never leave me. You never forsake me. You never turn your face away from me. You never have bad plans for me. You always are thinking good thoughts toward me. You always have only good plans for me. You are always speaking to me, equipping me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, we bless you today for all the work that you're doing. Father, it would not be so much for us to even expect that we would have some radical testimony in a test in a, a praying time like this where you are moving and people are opening themselves up to receive from you, to become givers of life and not a, a, a stagnant well of water, that the water's kind of there but it's real low and the well is deep and you have nothing to draw with. No, 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 no. Rivers of living water pouring forth from us Make it true for everybody who is gathered here today to hear your word. Lord, that we can go out into this desert, go out even beyond this desert where we may work or recreate. Wherever we go, we should be saturating with the word. These fountains of living water flowing forth from us. We love you, Lord. Can someone just say, I love you, Lord? And I thank you for what you've done today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we clap our hands in agreement?